have to use a lot of different types of cameras and different inputs, outputs. Integrate different camera formats when we're mixing broadcast cameras with standard definition feeds and laptop feeds. We can mix that all together in the TriCaster. Add instant replay, add opportunities for sponsorship. Where we are competing for eyeballs against TV, so production quality is extremely important. Very portable and, and more importantly, especially for me, user friendly. to have replay, to have graphics, to make it look like a television quality broadcast. It's the way sports is supposed to be watched. We've got flexibility with our multi-camera replays, our editable graphics and a multi-camera production. We can have an interview happening inside the front studio, a band recording in the middle studio. We have a green screen that we can do interviews on as well. And it all comes together inside of the TriCast. Any event uh, is really about producing content to engage the consumer in a different way. For you to be able to do HD through the internet and add social media is a brilliant package that makes it a better experience for the consumer than it does just in traditional television. We have seen an uh, upturn in uh, subscription numbers on our online video content of about 25% due to what we can achieve now. While I'm punching the show, I've got highlights posted right on our YouTube, our Twitter, Facebook before the game's even over. With the advent of social media, Facebook, MySpace, there's a ready pool of communities and consumers who can be marketed to. Not only did new tech allow us to become a great product in quality, but allow us to become more of a global brand. Find your superpowers. For 30 years, New Tech's been, been giving anyone superpowers to create network-style television and webcasts. And we're very excited to have you guys here for Broadcast Minds 2014. It's very cool because the definition of what it means to be a broadcaster is so rapidly changing. And the panel that we've put together for you today are the big thinkers and innovators that are actually pushing the limit on, on what that means. So I'd like to start off by introducing our first panelist. Starting in a spare bedroom in her house, Callie Lewis has built a multimedia empire which will soon reside in a multi-million dollar facility in Dallas, Texas. She's one of the first females in tech broadcasting. She's a correspondent for everyone from CNN, BBC to Fox. And she has over two and a half million followers in social media. And the most exciting statistic about Callie Lewis is that her videos have been viewed over a billion times. So I'd like to join me in welcoming Callie Lewis. <clears throat> Our next member of the Broadcast Minds panel is the biggest name in magic on the planet. His television show, Mind Freak, is still viewed by over 100 million viewers every season in over 90 countries. His magic products are available in over 50,000 retail stores, and he's the star of Chris Angel's Believe at the Luxor. And he is the most watched magician on the internet. And one clip, Walk on Water, has over 50 million views. So join me in welcoming Mr. Chris Angel. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, our next panelist for Broadcast Minds began his career in stand up comedy. And his early writing work for Roseanne and, and Dennis Miller opened the door for him to join the cast of Saturday Night Live, where he was the anchor of the Weekend Update with his trademark line, Now the Fake News. You can catch him on the Video Podcast Network's Norm McDonald Live. Help, help me welcome the incomparable Norm McDonald. Thanks for coming, man. Thank you. And now for the moderator. Tom Green is one of the most unpredictable comedians on the earth. 
He's the, the, is the, was the host of the Tom Green Show on MTV, and he's a pioneer of internet television, doing a live daily show from the comfort of his own living room, Tom Green's house tonight. And he's also the host in, of the current show on Access TV, Tom Green Live. And recently he's released one of the finest beers to ever come out of Canada, Tom Green Beer, <laughs> the most consistent branding man in television, Tom Green. Yeah. Hey, oh. how are you, Norm? Of hey. course, Callie, how are you? Chris? Hey, how's everyone doing? Welcome to the uh, Broadcast Minds panel. Are you guys ready to have a good time tonight? Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's morning. It's morning. It's, it's morning now, is it? Morning. Oh, my God. We, yeah, we had a good night. The night hasn't ended yet. We've been partying it up all night, right, guys? True. Yeah, this is. Uh, I'll tell you something that crazy girls. That's, uh, yeah. that's truth in advertising. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is exciting. We're going to have a conversation here today uh, about. Uh, about tel television and uh, broadcasting and uh, what's exciting about this is uh, everybody here has taken their passion in life and turned it into something amazing and uh, you know uh, Chris I mean you you, uh, you uh, are the most watched uh, magician in history on, on the, the most watched magician on the internet in history and on television well, what's the trick to getting, ah, uh, uh, <laughs> <on> the trick. <laughs> What's the trick to getting th those kind of views? Well, I think um, it's all about content, as you know from your success. <laughs> it's about creating a moment that people are engaged uh, to. And I think that I've been very blessed to, to understand, I think, the day and age that we live and how rapidly it changes, how to keep magic relevant. Whereas magic for a period of time kind of was stale and it wasn't um, pop culture. And for me, with my art, I try to keep it um, engaging pop culture relevant and try to do things that doesn't feel kind of old school. It might be old school, but it's packaged in a new way. And I think, uh, you know, with, with the internet and what's going on with social media, you know, it's got to be something now that people haven't seen or that they want to show. It has to be short, it has to be exciting, and it has to hold the attention of the public, which is very fickle by and large. Mm -hmm. You know, 10, 20 years ago, you could have um, uh, one camera shoot something and people would want to see one continuous shot of something. That doesn't work. Kids today are like, you know, overwhelmed with information. They have a short attention span, so it's got to be packaged in a way where it's short, concise, and is engaging. And I think I've found that formula, but it's always changing. So it's interesting to, to remain relevant by understanding what people, how they process information now. Yeah, and we, we've all built uh, our own little television studios as well, right? Yes. All, all, all four of us have built our own little television studios using, uh, uh, you know, consumer electronics, new technology. TriCaster. TriCaster. Norm, you're doing a, 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 the video podcast yes. work and the Norm McDonald live show using a TriCaster. Callie, you have a TriCaster. You have a TriCaster. Uh, uh, it, is, it, is it more fun doing it your, on your own, producing the show yourself? Your new uh, oh, yeah. podcast is uh, completely independent, and you're, or, or, or do you prefer broadcast Television. No, I prefer narrow casting because, you know, like when I first came to Hollywood, I met Richard Pryor, and I remember he said this thing. He was like, because I said, everybody loves you, you know? And he's like, I can't do Richard Pryor, but he's like, no, they don't. Yeah. I'm doing Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, they don't. He goes, what? He goes, only one in 10 people even know me, and only one in 100 like me. Uh -huh. He goes, but that's enough. Uh -huh. You know, because it's, and I thought about it, yeah, it's like three million people, you know? <laughs> and uh, so that's what's cool about, like, you having your own uh, narrow casting thing is that they only tune in for you, you know? So if I go on Letterman, uh, they're, they're, they're going to see Letterman, you yeah. know? They're tuning in to see Letterman. I'm the guest. They might like me. They might not like me. 
You know? I don't know yeah. about that. Everybody guy. likes Come you, on. right? Everybody, Everybody likes you. <laughs> but when you were, and when you, you know, when you were making sa Saturday Night Live, when you were on Saturday Night Live, there was all this preparation, writers, yeah. and all sorts of people involved, executive producers, and, and now you can just do it all yourself. Is that, that process more fun and making the show more fun? I like doing everything myself because I'm like you a stand-up, so we started completely independent, you know, and completely uh, uh, responsible for bombing or doing well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's uh, how we start. We grew up in stand-up, so uh, it was funny, you know, what Chris was telling me. I just read a book from when I was a kid called Future Shock uh -huh. by Alvin Toffler, but that's what he talks about. It's an amazing book, but he says, like, in the future, which is now, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that people that don't understand technology will become obsolete, uh -huh. and they'll get future shock. Yeah. We're almost there. Yeah, we're there. there. <laughs> Cal Callie, you... Callie has an... And, and, they, and he said they have an enor they'll have an enormous amount of product. And that's what I was just talking to Callie backstage. She has so much product, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Review units, gadgets, technology. But hours, hundreds of hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been so doing you, it for about eight years. So you, and you've now built a, a, a large uh, facility in yeah. Dallas. Yeah, as Philip said, uh, we started out uh, really in a bedroom in a house, like a lot of YouTubers or online content <laughs> people. Um, but we've been able to grow over the years. First, we went into a uh, 4,000 square foot studio that we leased. Now we've bought a building that we can uh, really customize, make it state of the art technology. Bought a it's building. Be geek heaven. Bought a building. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And you, you, I'm excited. You, you've built a, a whole web streaming facility, also, Chris. I created a 60,000 square foot uh, complex, which houses a broadcast studio, including fabrication shops to create the content, the props, the scenic design, all the elements, so that I'm kind of a one stop shop so any kind of dream I have I don't have to go to anybody rely on anybody and I think that is the future now and I think uh, you know with technology and specifically for me the TriCaster I'm not saying that to you know give a blatant plug but it has been an amazing tool um, to be able to do everything yourself and look like you spent millions of dollars. In my case, unfortunately, I did, but <laughs> but you don't have to. That's the point. Yeah. yeah, one man can do it, or you can have a team yeah. that can you know make it even better with just that one box, which is brilliant. Yeah. So my kid, you know, my kid. Yeah. I was when I was a kid, I wanted to be a sports. I was living, grew up in Canada with you. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a sportscaster, do hockey. But my, you know, what my kid does. He's only ten. He does a, a podcast, nobody listens to it. <laughs> but he does it because he loves PTI, so he does like a sports podcast. And he'll do, so he'll have that, you know that Malcolm Gladwell thing where you, if you do 100,000 hours, you're an expert. Uh -huh. He's doing like, uh, uh, you know, 20 hours a week. Like nobody's listening to it. Yeah. But he's getting better and better. Like, it's amazing. I would have loved that when I was a kid. Wouldn't you have loved that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Who are some of the guests that you have coming up in the new season of Norm MacDonald Live? Oh, uh, we got uh, uh, Fred, the great Fred Willard. We got uh, Larry King. We got uh, 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 Ray Romano, the great Ray Romano. Hey, we had Mickey Rooney booked, but... Oh, uh. really? <laughs> yeah. Who would have been the last guys? Was he really? He was booked on the ticket? Yeah, he was oh, booked for the next week. Yeah? Oh, wow. Yeah. Did, did, now, do you I didn't mean to bring everybody down. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good life, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, is there, is there uh, stuff that you can talk about on the show? Does this conversation go off in crazy directions that you wouldn't take it? Uh, uh, well, you know, the interesting thing is, like, when you have no notes from censors or anything, <laughs> so the first shows were like, uh, you know, practically pornographic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just say anything that comes to your mind. So you have to, you know, censor yourself, like, you have to great. decide who your audience you want to be, yes, who they yes. are, and where you want to exactly. go with it, and then you have freedom. But you have to, yeah, you have to sort of give notes to yourself. Yeah. Like there was a great Bob Dylan line, he said, uh, what do you say, if you live outside the law, you must be honest. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's what I think, like, 
if, if you're not, if nobody's telling you what to do, you got to do it, you got to tell yourself right, what's right. right and wrong, you know? Right, yeah. Now, Callie, now, you, it, might, it might be interesting from your perspective to tell people like how you built up what you do from, from scratch. You started this in your house. And, and she makes money. And you make money. <laughs> yeah, how, do, how did you monetize this? How did you take something that you started in your house and then be able to buy a building? That's pretty cool. <laughs> So I think, uh, you know, for us, it's, it's all about diversification. We, I think the number one mistake that people make um, treating an online business is that they treat it like it's something new. You know, it's not anything new. This, this new media world that we live in is just like any business that's existed for all time. Uh, so, and you look at any other successful business and it, they don't just do one thing. We don't just focus on advertising for the TV show that we do. We uh, also, we turn to our community. Uh, we use a service called Patreon, and um, you know, I don't know how many viewers are out here right now, but uh, you know, we have so many people who are willing to support the show uh, on a monthly basis just because they love what we do. They get the show for free, and they will always get it for free, but they continue to just give us money because they, they love it. And they, they do? want to be part of the family. Patreon? Patreon, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and then we also focus on different things like uh, product sales. Uh, we, we test things constantly. You may, as a, you know, watching outside, you may not notice that we're testing things, but we're constantly testing different ideas and methods and seeing what works and what doesn't. For example, we, uh, we released this uh, Kickstarter project for what we call bad parking uh, cards. It's, you know how when you go in a parking lot and people, <laughs> thank you, um, people are parked in the middle of the line, taking up two spots, and it frustrates the heck of you, out of you, right? And you wanna get your anger out and you wanna slash their tires, but that would send you to jail. Uh, so we created these uh, nine different designs of cards that are just goofy and fun, get your anger out, you just put it on their windshield and, and go, right? Sounds um, like a Larry David episode. <laughs> <laughs> For the enthusiasm. Yeah. So we, we tested the market with a Kickstarter project. We wound up selling like $35,000 worth of those cards, um, just kind of willy-nilly, but it turned out that people wanted product that we, that we could sell. And so, you know, we'll, we'll do more of that in the future, hopefully. Um, and, and then we also, not just advertising, not just product sales, not just community support, we um, work with companies like here at NAB, uh, you know, we were, and John P and I were co-hosting the Panasonic uh, stream, uh, used to, or, uh, live stream event that they were putting on. So we work with companies in that regard and we do a lot of different things. But the point is, is that we, we don't limit ourselves to what new media should be because it's new. <laughs> there are no rules, right? And that is the beauty of this world that we live in, is that we can play, we can learn from each other, and we can break new ground. It's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. Chris, you, uh, you uh, like using Twitter? I do use Twitter. <laughs> we, uh, Norm, you like using Twitter. You, I use it all wrong, but we, yeah. We all, enjoy, <laughs> we all enjoy using Twitter. Now, how, how do you use social media to complement what you're doing in, in, in the mainstream? Well, I think you have to have a kind of a synergistic approach between television, um, social media, and obviously a typical and traditional kind of marketing, um, at least for me to be effective in new products. We have, um, I have about 2,000 products um, that I have out, I don't license my name. And uh, so I utilize Twitter to support, I had a television series on last year called Believe on Spike. I had a 30 second commercial that I built into my contract, which if you ever do a TV show, get time, trade it for money. But it's very valuable because when a show plays in 102 countries, which my show is playing right now, it is a free commercial embedded in the show. So you drive everybody to your website, 
Twitter is driving people to watch a show, and it all basically feeds off of each other. And, uh, and you're able to really, you know, uh, do tremendous volume. My ticket sales just, you know, with doing this approach between social media, television, you know, went up 30% um, fourth quarter. Uh, because of it, we attribute it. And I think products, by and large, also, uh, you know, uh, reap the benefits of, you know, because today, they used to say uh, many years ago that it took, you know, X amount of impressions, like three impressions or 10 impressions to have it be effective. But I think now, because it's such an oversaturation of information that's, you know, literally, you know, just screaming at you, I think you have to have far more impressions in order to make people remember what you're trying to tell them. And so if it's a product, if it's buying a ticket, so really having a synergistic kind of strategy that in, employs many different you know, um, mediums to get your message out, and when they work harmless, harmoniously together, I think is really the most effective way today. Tomorrow it might change. And along those lines of, of getting you know, the message out constantly, uh, I think you're absolutely right there. I, I think one mis thing, mistake that people make online is being nervous of annoying their followers, right? Um, and so the more you put out there, the more people actually are willing to pay attention to you. And so if you're constantly, you sorry, can't do hard sorry guys, sales. but hammering, no, yeah, yeah. but no, yeah. not hard sales. Yeah but just constantly getting the message out in fun ways, exactly. interesting ways. Um, but the, the, the more you, you put out, the more they see, because they're, they're following, how many, how many people are you following on Twitter? Yeah, so when you look, you probably look like, you know, three, four times a day maybe. You're not gonna see every message, but the more Chris puts out, or Norm puts out, or Tom puts out, uh, the more chances they have of being able to catch your eye when you do wind up. How often do you tweet, Norm? Um, I, I notice you, I follow you on Twitter. Yeah. You're also often tweeting in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, you just do? wake up sometimes in the middle of the night and just feel the urge to tweet? Yeah. yeah? Well, yeah. you know what I like to do? I like, because I like tweeting, and then I, mostly I like reading uh, my fans, a lot of who hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they're following me, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what's actually interesting. Like, I remember when I was on Saturday Night Live, Lauren Michaels told me the first year, he goes, you know, people will come up to you in the street and say they like you and you'll think you're popular, <laughs> but um, the people that hate you don't come up to you. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so everyone, every time a guy complimented me, I go, oh, that guy probably hates me over here. <laughs> but then, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> because when you get Twitter, you're like, oh, I see. Yeah. Now the w Some people like me and some it, people hate my guts. It, Twitter has given us all so much uh, more access to all of those millions of people that hate yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> and none of In them, my case, I'm speaking none of for them myself. Have, like at first I was worried that they'd come and murder me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. But they, that's never happened yet. Yeah. <laughs> it Thank seems God. like the, when they break down the barrier between the fans and the performers, uh, the, the psychopaths um, are, uh, they like that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I now, hope Chris pulls a rabbit out of his hat later. Yeah. I pull it, <laughs> sometimes out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna say uh, what's interesting, and I think this has been a big misconception, is, you know, like I have approximately six million uh, followers between Twitter and Facebook and so like that, but the conversion rate you know, everybody walks around like, oh, I have six million followers, I have 16 million followers. People buy freaking followers on Twitter. Uh, I don't understand uh, just to have the number, but the conversion rate is very, very small. So you can't be like, oh, I have blah, blah, blah amount of people that are following me and that's gonna sell this or that's gonna push, because people become numb more now than, you know, a few years ago. No, that's ago. true. I know people that have gotten, when Twitter started, they got TV shows. Yeah. They had four million followers yeah. and they go, the TV network goes, oh, four million people will 
we'll watch the guy's show immediately. It doesn't work. I know, I know a headline magician in town that literally buys his Twitter followers. Yeah. I won't yeah. say who it is. Wow. But buys his Twitter followers. But the, way, the more important number is engagement. It doesn't yeah. necessarily matter because you can buy those Twitter followers and you can do a lot of different things to get numbers. It's more about engagement and how many people are actually responding, retweeting, commenting. How much do you comment back on the, the replies that you're getting? And those numbers are going to come out. Uh, Google Plus, for instance, I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to get all three of you on Google Plus. I know, I should have done that. <laughs> what is Google but, Plus? <laughs> I'm serious, actually. Only <laughs> no, I'm really serious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is Google Plus? Only okay. the second largest social network out there, you know. And okay, it's okay. Google's yep. social network. So, uh, it, it, you know, if you're wondering why it's important, consider the fact that Google owns search. And you're, when you put stuff out, it's all tied in together. Anyway, so they just released their um, view count. So when you go on to, you know, my profile, I've got two million followers. Um, how many views do I have, John? 110 million views. Yeah. Um, Are you and looking for a job by any chance? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you come work with me. <laughs> <laughs> but that that view count tells you how much engagement I'm right. getting, right? It's not the highest number out there. Actually, my co-host John P has more engagement than I do. Um, so, it, but that that number is so important for the future of what we do here in New Media, mm -hmm. I, I believe. Chris, you have this uh, huge global brand, and uh, then you do go do Loyal Saturdays. Are you, are you still doing that? On uh, I, you're, I you're haven't had the opportunity because I have. I've been working on television projects, which but takes a bit. Choose of to sometimes do a streaming. I do. TV we, show from your studio, which is very I, and fun. And when I when I initially set up my studio. I was so excited about the opportunity to broadcast whatever I wanted to. I would broadcast two shows every day with other people. I wasn't even the talent on there. I just gave other people the opportunity, you know, to do their thing. But it, you know, it got very uh, time consuming. And then with other things that were going on, I wasn't able to continue to do that. But I do think. Um, that is certainly um, something that excites me, something that interests me in Loyal Saturdays and Livewire and all those shows that I had lots of guests on like, like yourself. And you've inspired me in so many ways because of what you did you know, back in the day before it was popular, before people were doing it, you know, um, was really Yeah, and Tom was before his yeah, time. Yeah, giving people early. the opportunity <laughs> to, to, to kind of control your destiny, right, yeah. with a camera. I, I just say never build a TV studio in your living room. Never, <laughs> never, never do it. Do it in, in a park or something before you do that. But Don't you find also being before your time like you always are? Doesn't pay a lot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pioneers leave with the arrows in their back. Where did that come from? That sounds painful. I don't know. I just made that up. No, somebody told me that once. Definitely. No. <laughs> sounds like the cert. But do you, ever, do you ever worry you're going to say something, you know, when you have this, this established brand and then you go on and you have this sort of free form show? You ever worry you're going to say something that might get you in trouble? Or? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah, my manager sometimes, uh, <laughs> can you pull that down? You know, because it could hurt your brand, you know, especially with a brand that is in uh, a lot of households um, to kids and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I look at it as I want a way to express myself and not be censored and be able to do what I, what I do because in the past I've, you know, had some issues and uh, they, they, they were public. So um, now I just try to take that and keep that in a forum that uh, allows me to to do that, but sometimes uh, you got to kind of censor yourself, as you talked about earlier. Yeah. And I think that's the key, it's to find that balance between, you know, maintaining um, a, a creative outlet that entices you and excites you, yet keeping it within reason and kind of uh, making it uh, applicable for most viewers. Yeah. Censor yourself, but also allow people to get to know the real you, which is what you know you're doing. You don't want to know the real me. <laughs> <laughs> I levitate at home and spin my head around. <laughs> so Norm, how do you? Well, let's talk about the technology for uh, the actual some of the technology you guys are using, the actual equipment, and then 
Uh, after that, we can actually open it up for some questions. We can take some questions for, uh, from the audience. But uh, like, what equipment are, are we using here? We're using TriCasters. TriCasters. Cameras, right? We're using yeah. cameras. Cam and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the cameras give you the picture. Yeah. But what's, great about, what's great about the microphones. new <laughs> microphones, the sound goes through the microphone. Oh, wait, you're supposed down to have a microphone? Down the wire <laughs> into the TriCaster. Yeah. What's great about the new TriCaster, and I, again, it's not a plug, but um, well, you have the new 8000. Well, yeah, and, and what's amazing about it is that the past TriCaster, I would have to set up two cameras for every position I wanted to have a close-up shot um, and then to do a wide shot. And, and now you can literally be, you can literally zoom in. Um, it has a tracking uh, device on the thing, and it's amazing to be able to do that because now you need half the cameras to get all the shots that you need with a green screen hyper, you know. Yeah. So it's it's an amazing um, leap for the TriCaster, and so um, again, uh, it's just amazing how that particular unit, probably 10, 15 years ago, would have cost a half a million dollars. Yeah. And now <coughs> it's affordable, and you know you can really do stuff that is beautiful quality and gives you so many opportunities. Your imagination is the limit. Um, but cameras with, with, with wires, yeah. cables, microphones, cables. lavaliers. XLR connectors. Yes, yeah. sometimes, yes. I did a stand-up special, and uh, like I did a, other times I've done stand-up specials, the networks do it, you know? And I always hate them, like, and I, so they'll have like a crane shot, like swooping down, and that's, that's a big thing. They want to do a crane yeah. shot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's just me. Doesn't distract stage. the audience at all with the, no, the crane. <laughs> yeah, so you're trying to do a joke, and a crane's coming. Yeah. At you. All they're paying attention to is the crane. So I said, I don't want to do it. Like, I want to do it in a small club. I want to do it my own way. So, anyway, I just did it with digital cameras and did like two shows, and it was awesome. And then uh, I did three cameras, like, I did two shows, so I did three cameras here, and then in the second show, I used the three cameras elsewhere. Yeah. So it looks like six cameras. Yeah. You know? So, uh, but it was so fun, and uh, and 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 you edit it exactly the way you want it, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> you don't, because I don't shoot the audience when I do it. Like, and whenever I've done a stand-up special, they always shoot the audience. You know, so if you talk about a Chinese guy, they cut to a Chinese guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I like doing it just my own way, and it was like so fun, especially with stand-up, because right. you know how stand-up, you're very protective of it, you, yeah. know, you, don't, you don't want them to mess it up. And mm -hmm. I always thought when I saw a stand-up special, anybody's stand-up special, even when I was a kid, like George Carlin, they'd show the stand-up special, and then there'd be 200 names of, on the credits. And it's just a guy on stage. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what those 200 people were doing, but yeah. so my next special is just going to have one credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take it back. Okay, well, let's uh, open up the uh, floor to some questions. There is a microphone uh, right there. If, they, if you have a question, why don't you go stand by the microphone and we will, um, we will field some questions from our audience. And uh, we have the one. Micro microphone is right over there, this uh, gentleman here. Uh, what's your name, sir, and uh, what is your question? Good morning, everybody. My name is Carmelo. I'm working for the government in Belgium. The question for You're the from panel, Belgium? From Belgium. Belgium, nice. We've got a very nice stand over there if you want to see. Okay. And Belgian chocolate tonight. Okay, bonjour, so, monsieur. <laughs> so, I'm a technician. Bonjour, I'm, monsieur. Yeah, bonjour. Yeah, bonjour. Bonjour, everyone. Je parle français. French French accent, very no, nice Belgium, accent. we speak French. We speak French. Yeah. yeah, we speak four yeah. languages, my dear. Oh, uh, okay, now you're showing Small us. Small country, too many languages. <laughs> <laughs> so, from a technical point of view, I want to get your, 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 your answer on that. What's the technology which today does not exist that you would love to leverage in your own businesses? I, I know like it's a tricky question. Time travel. <laughs> <laughs> I a lot of make this one. <laughs> we all have time travel forward. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <Nice>. that's <laughs> Actually, we have time travel backwards because what stay what what is on YouTube? Yes. is always there. Whatever you do is always online, right? That is always a good go question. That I'd like you know what I'd like to do is Sims because I do a lot of I'm, I'm a, a degenerate gambler. <laughs> this guy showed me how to do Sims, you know, which is like, you, you know, you play the game, 
If there's a basketball <laughs> game, you play the basketball game 10 million times and see exactly what'll happen. Yeah. And I, so I've become obsessed with Sims. <laughs> and, um, and then this other guy told me, like, I'm so into Sims. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this guy told me that uh, he thinks that uh, we're, uh, all of us here, all of life is a Sim. Uh -huh. Because he said, like, a computer will have the original, and then, of course, you have the 10 billion sims, right? So the, the, the chance that you hit the original is almost zero. The chance you hit the sims is, like, 100, almost 100%. So the, he said the odds are that we are a sim. That this panel, <laughs> this panel is not actually happening right no. now. No. Or it's happening... Uh, it's, ha it's, a, it's a pale, like, variation of an actual... <laughs> four really cool people. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris, is there any technology that you could imagine using for, not just for, uh, for, for streaming video, but for your actual magic show? Well, yeah, I uh, played around with uh, magnets for extensive uh, use in levitation, and uh, it's not uh, feasible right now with the magnetic fields that you can create. They're very massive in order to be able to levitate something. Um, obviously, the... Uh, you could levitate a robot. The, the bullet train, you know, can, can, you know, but it's only, you know, a couple of inches. So, so what do you mean? That's what the bullet train does? Huh? That's what the bullet train does? I believe so, yeah. It's, Mag lev yeah. technology. Yeah, yeah. But it's, but, but you can't, um, you know, there's this, uh, I'm working on a new levitation that's going to be in my show, Believe, plug, 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 here at the Luxor <laughs> um, in Vegas. Um, it, this year, I've been working on it for like 15 years, I had to actually employ some of the folks that do NASA stuff to be able to produce this idea that I had because uh, the technology didn't exist. And um, so for me, it's always about forward thinking and looking at what's available and seeing the latest, greatest things and trying to you know, always keep what I do with an emotional kind of connection to the audience. The magic of emotion is not a trick, it's the human connection. And when you have that, whether you're doing, you know, web shows or television shows, that's what makes one's product or, or brand successful. It's not, it can't be cold, you know? And so for me, it's looking at what I can do in the future that embraces technology that's on a cusp of cutting edge um, and maintain that human connection uh, that, you know, that, that, that's vital in, uh, in, in success for, for anything, you know, really. You know what makes things a lot easier is lighting. Like, I, I, find, I find lighting enormously uh, uh, burdensome uh -huh. in everything I've done. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything about video is a burdensome <laughs> yeah. production. But if there was, no, like, some of these cameras uh, have, need less lighting now. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, and I, I wish they'd come to a day when uh, there was no lighting necessary because... Uh, it's radio. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's take another question here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, and and uh, if you want to ask a question, just get in line and get a few people in line so we can keep it moving. What's your name, sir, and, uh, and uh, where are you from, and what's your question? Derek Ross, originally from Vancouver. Nice. Kelly and Chris, you, Kelly, you mentioned the business, the cards you were selling. Chris, you mentioned keeping the uh, 60 seconds in your spot. Any other quick hits on things you've come across, maybe things you didn't think was going to work, but worked great in your, in your content? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, um, any time I would try to make something that I thought people would like, it never worked. It was those demonstrations, like, I don't know if anybody saw me uh, cut two people in the park and then switch their bodies. I, I did that, and then next thing I know, in a few months, it's uh, number 18, mm -hmm. the most watched YouTube clip, 20 million views like that. Um, I, I would say just to be true to yourself and, and, and don't, it's like the song that's a hit usually took 15 minutes to write as opposed to two weeks to write. Okay. So like, you know, what happened to you as well. So I would say just to be creative, you know, and, and try different things and spend little money trying things because, you know, there's a lot of shows in this town that spend a shitload of money I could say that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, on a bad idea, which will never make it a good idea. 
So you can't buy creativity. And there are so many people out there that have such successful clips because they didn't have money and it forced them to be creative. So money's not the answer. It's being creative and thinking about unique ways, angles, and being strategic about how you can do something that, that is effective in a very saturated world that we live in. And yeah. listening to your audience and, yeah. and paying attention to what they're asking for. I mean, one or two people that tell you they want this, it, it may be representative of the larger audience, it may not be, um, but testing is, is, is absolutely key. Absolutely. I, um, I was not sure that the business cards the bad barking cards would work at all. I was like, I don't think anybody's gonna buy these things. Um, but you know, it, it, we're very risk adverse in our, in our business. We don't take risks that we can't come back from. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we test, we test small, we, we test with a lot of thought, um, the Patreon stuff, we didn't know if anybody would want to pay or if we would have like a dollar a month, you know? <laughs> so you just test these things, you put a lot of thought into it ahead of time and you make smart decisions or as smart as you can. Well, I don't know, smart, I had a but. television program and I, I decided to make a viral video. Yeah. So. Uh, you set out <laughs> to make a viral video. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. So I said, <laughs> it, was a, it was called a sports show. It was a comedy sports show, right? So I just went to the, to the basketball court and threw a basketball from full court for like five days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got it in. Yeah, I won the swoosh, right? And then I told the people on the show, I said, hey, let's make this video viral, you know? And uh, it's me throwing a full court basket. Anyways, uh, 600 views. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so that's what she's. That's what they're saying. Like you can't, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Well, you know, maybe it just hasn't caught on yet. It could explode tomorrow. You know. It could. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we have another. Oh, we have a guy over there. Oh, you going? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, you're, you you want him to ask? You, you prefer him? <laughs> what? Being polite. Oh, well, they have Mike over there too. Look at that. Oh, there's a guy. This is the guy over there too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> it's okay. technology. Okay. You go ahead then. Yeah. Hey, I'm Nick from Arizona. I was just wondering if you had any tricks or advice to procuring talent, guest talent, like you went from interviewing people on the street to being able to interview celebrities, and any tricks to bump up? He just interviewed Dan Rather, by the way. Yeah. 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 yeah that's Very cool. nice. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 uh, it's, you know, Norm knows. Uh, I tweet them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. D how, how did you get Ray Romano to come do your, uh, I your tweeted new show? Him. Yeah. Huh? Well, you know what I do? I don't tweet them. I just go, like, hey, man, Ray Romano would be cool to have on the show. <laughs> and then it says, at Ray Romano. So then they, they send that all to Ray Romano. They go, oh, why don't you come on the show, Norm's show, and stuff like that. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, I yeah. tried that with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, how do you get, because you have some amazing guests, um, how do you get, procure those guests? Well, when I, when I started doing my internet show, uh, you know, it was, it was a few years ago, there wasn't as many podcasts and, and things, and I reached out to people that I was just a huge fan of, and at the time, there wasn't as much competition to get people, and people like Norm would come do my show all the time, and eventually we... One time, I went on Tom's show, I did the Tonight Show, Remember that? Uh -huh. I did the Tonight Show, which is taped at 5.30, and his show is live at 9. So I did the Tonight Show with the band Pitbull, remember? Yeah, hell yeah. And uh, then I took the band Pitbull, went over to Tom's house, <laughs> did his show, which went on before the Tonight Show. Yeah, we scooped him. So basically, Norm brings my guest. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, don't be afraid to ask people, and you know, if you're, you know... People like talking about themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look at us, we're all up here. <laughs> all right, now your turn. Thank you for your question. What's your name and... Uh... I'm Ryder Cast. I'm from Ryerson University in Toronto. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, you guys have been talking a lot about social media. Ryerson? Yeah. Awesome. RTA program in yeah. Ryerson. Uh, there's this school of thought that says, social media only preaches to the converted people like your page and then you're able to contact them. So what is your thought on that? Because you guys have obviously built up these big social media followings. 
And also, so how do you overcome that? And also, do you agree with that idea that you can only really reach these people with who already like your content? No, not at all. I mean, I, I constantly, you know, I have a good following, but I constantly hear from people who just, quote unquote, find me, and they're like, what do you do? I have no clue who you are. Why am I following you, right? And that's, maybe they find me on a list or whatever, but there is a way to engage the audience. Um, whatever topic is of interest to you, or if you're producing content or whatever, you go out and activate that audience. So you go find the people who are talking about that you know, using hashtags or whatever. It takes a lot of effort. It requires you to be dedicated, but you can reach an audience that is not your own and make them your own. I find like with Twitter, mine stopped. <laughs> so I kind of agree with you. It stopped at a certain amount uh -huh. and, and then grew very incrementally from there. You know, but uh, maybe you should like oranges instead of bananas. What? Maybe you should like oranges. Instead of <laughs> How bananas. do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's his Twitter bio. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I'm with him. I don't know how to fuck. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. We're all big, big boys here. Okay, so let's go over here. Thank you for your question, Ryerson. Okay, uh, let's go to this. We'll go back and forth now. Yeah. Ryerson. Hi, I'm Neil Scott from Calgary, Canada. Hey, yeah, everybody's from Canada. Yeah, I'm Canada. feeling left out. A lot of Canadians out here. <laughs> okay, uh, Too my, many. Comment, okay. Uh, my question is prompted by what Callie said earlier uh, about content that you put out there stays on the internet forever. So the question I have for all of you is, how do you manage content that's out there that no longer fits your brand or you wish you hadn't said in the first place? <laughs> oh. Yeah, like I never should have humped that dead moose. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a day that goes by that I don't think about this question. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, if you do like, uh, cause I do stand up like Tom, we go around the country. And so radio stations will interview, you know, you do like four or five radio stations uh, in the morning and then they have their cameras, you know? And uh, that goes on the internet. So wherever you are and you're in the morning and you don't know what you're talking about, you say some crazy thing. Yeah. Then it's on the internet forever and then, uh, you know, whatever. It's actually a problem, really. It really is because there's yeah. so much video. Everybody's filming with their cameras and their cell phones all the time. It ends up really kind of watering down what you want people to actually see. And, and when they search, you know, they don't know where to look. So, you know, you have to sort of learn. On to the other hand, the when end. I go on the internet and look on YouTube and stuff, like for somebody that I like, I want to see everything. So, you know what I mean? I want to see the bad see the stuff and the cool stuff, like, because I get addicted to YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, I'll watch and I'll go, I got to remember that motherfucker over there. Like, I'm not. <laughs> but you know, they got that side thing. I go, I go there next. And I watch yeah. that for 10 minutes. And I'm over there. And then it's five in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and I start tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, what's, what's the YouTube videos that have got the highest views for, for you? I, th I think uh, for me, uh, it was the walk on water. I think it has like 50 million, and then collectively there's over, over 250 million views. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's, uh, it's, it's just an interesting world that, uh, that we live in, and it's, it's um, you know, there's Funny, a lot Jesus of- Jesus walked on water, not one hit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's um, you know what what you were talking about before. It's like you know about um, you, you have to stay in your bedroom in order to have privacy nowadays because no matter where you go or look at all the cameras right now, this is going to be right now. This moment will be on YouTube right now. It probably is, um, and and that's the thing. So it's it's a completely different culture. And being a little older than uh, probably you are. <laughs> Uh, I grew up before, you know, the internet, before, when, you know, they had uh, the phone in the kitchen, yeah. the cord. The what? The yeah. phone in the kitchen That's with right. the cord that you had to talk to everybody. Oh, and yeah. Dad would be like, why are you, you know, in the room? What can you, what aren't you able to say in front of everybody else? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's very, you have to be careful and you have to, you have to manage what you put out there. And a lot of kids today are putting out 
you know, these pictures that are going to live on the internet. From, it's, it's from crazy. a kid's perspective, it's up to the parents, you yeah. know, to educate their, their kids on what to do and what not to do and what the risks are. Yeah. But from, from the question, I, I don't see you anymore, but, um, oh, there you are. Um, so your, your question, uh, the only thing you can do is really focus SEO on your content that you want to push up, right? So that would be where I would say focus your efforts. You can't do anything about what's out there that you can't take down, and then just just try and raise what you can uh, from the search results. Okay, we have thanks. We have time for a few more questions. So let's uh, let's uh, go ahead with your question. Let's see if we can get these last three people in before the. We run out of time. Okay, hi, my name is Jennifer Dines, and I work at a public access station in Portland, Oregon. Uh, and so, nice. um, thank you. What we need to do is get people to create their own content uh, and encourage them to come up with their ideas and then see them through to the end. Uh, we also have a TriCaster 8000, so that's a good start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no matter how much technology we have, if their content sucks, no one's gonna watch it. Uh, and so, um, I guess my question is, uh, how, how would you teach a public access class? How would you get people to make their own show and have it be of some substance? Oh, Tom, you, do, you could answer that. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's like we've been talking about, you need to start with, uh, you know, uh, uh, in something that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it has to be interesting. That's, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be funny. It doesn't necessarily, but it, interesting is always good. I would say start by humping a dead moose. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, We've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, We've even had the naked guy and, you know, just didn't. Oh, this sounds like a good show. That's my kind of <laughs> show. But, uh, you know, just, you know, you, people will have to just uh, think of something that uh, people are going to want to watch and, uh, and, uh, you know, that's what I'd say. What would you maybe say? there's maybe there's too much information. Yes. Maybe there's too much stuff already. Maybe there's enough. Maybe we can stop. Yeah. <laughs> so the, stop all so no, the answer is do nothing. Then. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the most. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's. We have time for one more question. We have a minute. A minute left. We have to. Tell you what, we can do two. There's two. two. We have two more yeah. questions. That was yeah. basically three, my oh, question. Three. What could or should be the future of access television? So she kind of asked that. So I'm, I'm willing to pass it on to the next yeah. guy. But unless you want to say something. I mean, I, I guess. But I mean, in, in all seriousness, you know, you, you know, we can spend too much time uh, uh, figuring out how the cameras work and getting everything lit right and setting up your set, and you forget that you still have to have an interesting conversation. So, yeah. Go. Hi, Gary Robinson from LA. Um, I was wondering how you use, utilize the um, live streaming abilities of the TriCaster to interact with the audience, or do you mainly use it for podcasting and post-based stuff? How do you guys? Uh... I, I mean, really, you can use the TriCaster in so many different applications. You know, uh, I, I've used it to have, you know, to, to roll in content, to 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 have people participate that are that are at home on their computer. You know, uh, that uh, you can. It's really endless what you can do with that thing. The virtual sets, uh, just so many ways. Pre-tape, live. You know, we we do a lot of the same stuff. We uh, you know bring. People in. We actually have a, our engineer created a Skypezilla where we can bring in four different, you know, people from four different locations via Skype into the TriCaster and then switch between everybody within studio and on Skype. Um, we bring in. We actually use that to pull in the chat room. So when we do our live shows, we are listening and watching the uh, chat rooms live. So questions that are being brought in, we talk about and answer the questions. And we'll sometimes display that. We actually do a check-in um, each week from to ask people where they're from. So everybody from all around the world, from countries I've never even heard of, will say where they're from, and it's just like bam, 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 bam. It's awesome, but we'll put that on the screen so that people can see us and the chat room at the same time, and that engages the audience a little bit more as well. Your show's live, right, Norm? Yes, it is. Norm. I'd like to get a, what's a virtual set? Virtual set is basically a green screen that you can you oh. can have. You can create one from scratch green so you screen. can use. No, I understand. Somebody. Green screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then th what you did with the news. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we are out of time, but let's take our one last question and then and we oh. cannot do the question. 
Let's not take your question. You can come ask uh, your question to us right over here personally uh, after the show. Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, Thank you. Thank you guys. being part of the panel. Thank you, Chris Angel, Callie Lewis, Norm McDonald. And uh, thank you. And make sure you check out Tom Green's show at the Hard Rock, Chris Angel at the Luxor, and everybody else online. Thank you guys, we appreciate you guys being here. Tom, awesome job, dude.